Greetings petrol heads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game. Before we get into this episode, um, I will be I will be making another community challenge. Um, this was Sedan 57 Chevy's idea, um, a family sport sedan basically. So uh, I, as far as years go, I, I was I was thinking to myself like what what years what t what what times should the cars be built in? And because uh, well, I did I decided to give you well to let you build your cars between the years 1995 and 2004. Uh, you can you can uh, choose for yourself um, like what year you built. Um, your your car in um, and also like what um, what what kind of uh, size it's gonna be so and depending on that uh, I will be comparing your cars to uh, um, some competitors that, that I built myself for the E36 M3 the E the E46 M3 or the E39 M5. That's the three cars that I know quite a lot about as far as family sedans go. Even though the E46 M3 is technically not a sedan, it's 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 it was only available as a coupe or a convertible. But that doesn't matter. It's based on the free series. Um, for the purpose of this this community challenge, though, um, four doors, and uh, you know, you can make it front wheel drive. You can make it. Uh, Rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, doesn't matter. I mean, it's gonna have four doors, so it can't be mid-engine, of course. Um, also, can't be rear-engine, so it it needs to be front-engine. That's one thing. Front-engine, four doors, and uh, power output can be higher than than the real-world competitors, but it should still be somewhat uh, like realistic to build. Um, so you can't have race intakes. You can't have well, you can have race exhaust, but you can can take semis like tires, um, and you can't use carbon fiber. That's pretty much it. Okay, so for today's episode, I will be displaying the 2016 AMW Leo. It is a uh, mid if 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 uh, we're talking about like uh, three series being a compact or a small size sedan, then this is a mid size sedan, like the BMW five series, uh, or or so. Um, now this also comes with a choice of either six or eight cylinders, although the six cylinders are now uh, an in a six engine because it does fit in here. And I tried so many different tunings with a V six, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get uh, it to perform. Uh, the way that I wanted it as far as um, both acceleration and economy goes. So with the inline 6 engine I was having a much easier time doing that. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So the Eco 6, uh, now this this uh, is obviously going to be the same for all models. Uh, aluminium monocoque, aluminium panels, the wishbones front, multi-link rear. And uh, it is rear-wheel drive again. So Actually, I think as far as looks go, I think I did a decent job making this like look the part with a 5 Series. Like somewhat aggressive and sporty, but also still remaining elegant. I think I did an okay job at that. Somewhat contemporary slash futuristic uh, taillight design, but um, you know, nothing too fancy. And. Yeah, this engine. This this is based now on a new engine family. It's a, you know, the maximum family capacity is four liters, ninety three by ninety eight. This is displaying the the wrong thing because this engine is deboard and destroked to three liters, but the family size is four liters. Um, yeah, so with its base application with the eco. Uh, setting it makes 235 horsepower and 283 pound-feet of torque look at that torque curve and this power curve you didn't see that in in the v6 application in on the Eagle because uh, obviously with two two turbos for six cylinders it takes a lot more more air to uh, 
to get the turbo spooled up than uh, if you only have one turbo for six cylinders. And uh, which basically means high revs. So yeah, that is the engine. 235 horsepower, 283 pound-feet of torque. Now all of these are going to be coming with a um, with a with an eight-speed ZF gearbox. Although um, here in the game uh, there is no option of uh, making an eight-speed sequential gearbox in 2016 for whatever reason. Because like for the last at least three or four years, every almost every car uh, or uh, I shouldn't say almost every car. But a lot of cars have had that 8-speed um, sequential gearbox from um, from ZF. So a lot of premium cars, I should say. Yeah, obviously you won't you won't get it in a Ford Fiesta. But um, yeah, 3 Series, 5 Series, um, Jaguars, um, you know, Mercedes. No Mercedes have their own 7-speed. Uh, automatic gearbox and never mind that's the speedtronic um, but anyway like Aston Martins have had it I don't know if Cadillac is also using I think yeah it is actually the the ATSV has it uh, point is the the eight speed that have spin around for a couple of years and but we don't have an option to get uh, eight speed uh, sequential gearboxes in the game here so I thought the closest thing in performance was going to be a 7 speed, obviously 7 is closest to 8, but also double clutch, uh, despite the fact that the ZF is a single clutch, but yeah, the double clutch is just going to make the whole thing smoother, it's going to make for better comfort, so maybe it isn't a bad thing. So. Yeah, in the game, long story short, in the game it has a 7-speed uh, double clutch, in real life it would have a set of 8-speed. So with that, um, 225-245 tire setup, 17-inch alloy rims with medium compound tires, 6-piston vented discs up front, 2-piston vented discs on the rear, a, full, a fully clad on a tray and cooling flaps to help with economy, and uh, then we have five seats with premium interior, premium infotainment, advanced safety and all driver assist except launch control. Um, I know that some of you viewers, um, especially from, from America, and uh, don't take that with a negative connotation, it's not meant uh, that way in, uh, in the, uh, like at all, but um, some of you may be thinking, well, if it's going to uh, compete with the 5 Series, it's, it's, uh, it's got um, to have a luxury interior. And you would actually be wrong at that. Um, first of all, you, you may have seen my video of, of my own BMW. And uh, it's a 5 Series. Admittedly, it's the last generation 5 Series, but still. Um, there's not even like very much leather at all in, 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 in the cabin. There's uh, like only on where the where the gear lever is, that's coated with leather. But apart from that, like the entire dashboard is like plastic. Sure, it's it's nicely arranged and it's well made, but that's not what you'd call luxury. There's no wood, there's no leather, there's you know no aluminium. It's 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 well made and all that, but Again, premium would, would fit it better than, than luxury. And it's a similar thing actually with the, with the current um, 5 Series generation. It is a little bit better, of course, than with the previous generation. It would be sad if they hadn't improved, but um, still premium fits the bill better than luxury on a 5 Series. So with that, we have 47.2 drivability, 32.7 sportiness on the Eco model, 51 comfort. Again, the the D96 pays huge dividends here because of its uh, incredible smoothness. Uh, prestige and prestige is all right. 63 safety is good, and uh, again, I didn't miss with the factory and engineering tabs. But you can probably assume that this would start at around the same price as a five. Um, 
530i. It's the 252 horsepower version. So around um, the base price would be about 40 grand. Uh, why did that? Why does that? Since when does that go into the negatives? Since when can you actually fit a negative markup to one of your cars? I I didn't realize that before. Anyway, um, yeah, starting at around 40 grand for the Eco Six. Next up is going to be the Fun Six. It's going to be a little bit more powerful. Still based on the same engine block, of course, but now revving a little bit higher, uh, having slightly more more cam profile, or actually 10 points more. It's from from 30 to 40. A um, little bit more boost, a little bit bigger compressor. Yeah, 275 horsepower, 290 pound-feet of torque. Still being very economical at at, at doing all this. And yeah, 8.19 liters per hundred grammers is not bad. Uh, we've gone through the whole gearbox thing before. Still the same tires and the rims and brakes and same aerodynamic stuff except for adjusted cooling. And interior is the same. So with that, we will do 0 to 100 in 6.3 seconds. And a quarter mile will take 14.8 seconds. With, with the Eco 6 being 40 grand, you can assume that this is probably going to be like 42, 43 grand. Or we can just do the same thing that we did with the Eagle and uh, put like 2,500 dollar on dollar um, steps between the models. So 42,500 for this one. Next up would be the Sport 6. Um, again, revised engine. Now 300 horsepower and 290 pound-feet of torque. Although we now have, now this is the, the same peak torque as you got in the Fun Six, but it does make it, it it does make use of of the torque for a longer uh, rev band, and it also has just generally it revs higher. It can make use of all this power for longer. So there's no doubt this thing is going to be quicker than the Fun Six still being pretty economical at doing all this so not bad in the least i i just couldn't get those numbers with with, with a v6 i'll be honest with a three liter v6 um this will get slightly wider tires front and rear it'll also get 18 inch rims um it'll also get slightly bigger brakes and an upgraded suspension with active sport springs rather than active comfort which was what the eco and fun line were were running so with that 8.54 liters per hundred kilometers i mean for a 300 horsepower premium sedan it's not bad i mean sure some some real world cars in this category might do better but first of all not by much and then secondly again you have to factor in the fact that um cars in this game are using maybe a little bit more than real world cars or at the very least they these numbers here are higher than what manufacturers claim in real in the real life in, in the real world that's also a difference like, when was the last time that any given car, any given new car, would would actually use just as little fuel in practice as it does in paper? When was the last time that ever happened? Well, don't answer that. <laughs> so 5.7 seconds, 0 to 100.
quarter mile in 14.2 so that's more than half a second quicker than the fun six so those extra 25 horsepower really do make a difference and yeah if this is this one's gonna sit at like forty five thousand dollars so you could actually have you could actually argue for this being quite good value or maybe we would put this at 46 grand because we are choosing different springs here which are pretty expensive um and just generally a lot of retuning um yeah still pretty good value for that money i would say and we will also have v8 options available for this so starting with the eco 8 and the v8 engines are actually the same as you get in the eagle v8 uh models so the eco 8 is the 350 horsepower 385 pound feet uh version of the four and a half liter engine it'll use 9.2 liters which is quite a lot more than it does in the eagle because the eagle is so much lighter it, it weighs like 400 kilograms less and that mass really does <laughs> have have a big impact on on economy 5.6 seconds 0 to 100 13 well 14 14 seconds flat you could say on the quarter mile so it is slightly faster on acceleration than the sport 6 um, however the eco and fun models of both the six and eight cylinders are going to be limited to 250 kilometers an hour whereas the sport versions are going to be well the sport 6 is going to be running 275 and the sport 8 is going to be running 300 kilometers an hour that's the idea um and with the sport 6 being uh, 46,000, the eco 8 would probably sit at fifty thousand dollars which is still pretty good value considering you get a 350 horsepower twin turbo v8 and uh but if 350 horsepower is not enough maybe 400 horsepower is enough for you which is what you get in the fun eight same as the fun eight uh eagle this engine right here and we are now using more than 10 liters per hundred kilometers which um well what 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 do you expect really 1900 that's like that's like 4,300 pounds or something that this car weighs with a twin turbo 400 horsepower v8 like what do you reasonably expect this car to use um <laughs> but it will do 0 to 100 in 5.3 seconds which is pretty quick And it will do the quarter mile in 13.6 which is also pretty quick and from and uh with the eco 8 costing 50,000, this would be at 52,500. and then the sport 8 has the 450 horsepower 451 pound field of torque engine that you saw in the eagle sport 8 and with that engine it'll be using 11.8 liters per hundred kilometers it'll go 300 kilometers an hour um i'll slide there above that in the game but uh, it would be limited in real life 4.7 seconds 0 to 100 
quarter mile in 13 flat. So it's 0.6 seconds faster over the quarter mile than the fun eight. So again, th those extra 50 horsepower are really gonna make that much of a difference. Because like a lot of time you, when, when, when people are, who are currently, when people who are currently driving a car with like 90 horsepower and have have and have never really driven a fast car then they're like well does it really make a difference whether whether the car makes 400 horsepower or 450 yes it does <laughs> if if you try both of them you will know this that it does really make a difference um and especially in this in this car because we have an electric diff now rather than the gear diff that every other option gets it'll put down the power a little bit better it'll also have wider tires um it'll have um excuse me why is it i i i saved i saved this as the as the as the setting i don't know why why it changed that maybe it's just saving issues um but yeah 375 uh, millimeter front brakes 310 on the rear so it does get upgraded brakes um different suspension as well this is pretty much the same setting uh, that you also get on the sport 6. um yeah and it's fast and it would cost fifty-seven thousand five hundred, i guess this being the top of the line um, I decided not to make an HP version of this or if I did I would probably make a river drive version in order to compete with the BMW M5 I guess that that seems like a sensible idea so you know what let's just do this right now sport 8 is the one we're gonna be cloning we are gonna be throwing the this engine right here in there the 620 horsepower engine you also get in the eagle hp and we're gonna have to adjust a couple of things of course first of all we need wider uh, rear tires 305s are gonna be doing the job 275s up front seem sensible we we are gonna go with 19 inch rims actually 20 inch rims and then we are gonna give this Thing, uh, carbon brakes and adjust that a little bit now remember wh while the while the eagle is a sports coupe in the first place this is more of a premium sedan and uh, therefore I don't think I'm, I'm gonna give this thing a, a wing And therefore, it's not going to have as much downforce and it's not going to be as potent on the track. Um, right. How about the right height? I guess I should stiffen this thing up a little bit. Because the roll angle of 3.7 degrees is quite a lot. There we go. 3.2. That's more reasonable. 15 liters per hundred kilometers again what do you really expect <laughs> um sure an m5 of the current generation the f10 generation has a purple like has a um claimed 9.9 .9 liter per hundred kilometer um fuel consumption however <laughs> many times that has proved to be highly inaccurate a German car, car um, a magazine actually tested an, an M5 and drove it as economically as they possibly could and the lowest they could ever manage was around 12 to 12.5 liters per 100 kilometer. So if you're driving an M5, you know, normally with, you know, some, some little uh, burst of acceleration, you, you would be there as well. You would be up there as well on, on the economy as far as as far as that goes. Um, 
However, let's now worry about performance. 4.4 seconds, 0 to 100. Twelve point two quarter mile. Again, longitudinal grip is an issue in the game. A, a very commonly known issue, in fact. And uh, well, this this is more of a a very powerful cruiser, if you will. This is more of a GT car than the Eagle HP. There's 250 in less than 19 seconds. That's that's really fast. That's five seconds faster to 250 than a BMW M4. Because once it hooks up. Yeah, crossing 300 kilometers an hour pretty effortlessly. This this engine has a really really long power band, as you as you can see, and as you already saw on the Eagle HP, and that makes it just so good for longer acceleration runs. Because when you shift and you drop a little bit of revs, you're still very close to peak power already right after the shift, so you don't really get. You don't really lose much like actual power when 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 you shift. Like look look at that in the, in the higher gears, from was it from third to fourth, you're dropping a little bit, but almost immediately you're already at the in the power band already. And for uh, fourth to fifth, it's even even closer. And fifth to sixth, that's pretty much there's pretty much no gap anymore at all. And the same between sixth and seventh. Yeah, so really fast. How much would this thing cost? Um, I'm assuming that like 85 grand, maybe. N no, actually, the the Eagle HP was 95k. So for this to be around 100, maybe 110k, would probably be a reasonable estimation. And. Yeah, you can get an, an M5 for that money or a little bit less, perhaps. But, um, well, then the option says this long on an M5, isn't it? Whereas on this, well, because, because there's no way of, like, having or not having uh, some some sort of equipment in the, in the car in this game, uh, meaning that whatever you choose is going to be in there and there's more and there's no options list um basically that would also be my philosophy in real life like a certain a, a certain car ha comes with all of the available equipment for the car there is no such thing as the options list meaning that the base price is the is also the end price for a given model and uh, because you can really lose yourself in in uh, in the options list when buying when buying a premium car these days, if you buy a five series or something, or let alone a seven series, you, you could you could pretty easily double you could pretty easily pay double the base price for the car you actually end up with. It's crazy, and uh, that wouldn't be the case with. With this car or with any AMW, and it's sure um, that means that um, the base price is going to be a little bit higher than on its competitors. But because there's no options list, you save a lot of a lot of money that way. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.